here and over there. And welcome, one and all, here that may or may not be watching or will watch. We thank you here. Tonight's adventure is the Lost Tome. How do we get it? We are up at the uh, um, for, uh, the first fortress along the route from Carmestia to Illumina. And what, uh, we had our previous adventurers that uh, escaped the uh, harrowing uh, escapades of close to death to get up there for their safety and recoup and possibly gather some extra forces. So with that, uh, uh, Alicia there will be uh, trying to uh, locate the partner that she ran up there with and but somehow in the fortress the uh, that the uh, pussycat the uh, tabaxi done got uh, uh, misplaced someplace maybe licking its wounds and trying to heal up a, a little better and such uh, but she's looking for assistance in trying to uh, go back and find out why that group of uh, um, small dragon-like beasts were battling them and their mistress, what she was and who she was, and trying and trying to figure out exactly what they were protecting. She has some information from the uh, fitted uh, nightmares of our tabaxi talking about this great tome that he found that's huge, huge, and heavy, and he, and, and he couldn't open it by himself and such. So and she knows that, uh, that it's a huge tome book uh, that's uh, extremely heavy, you, not a typical book, and made of strange fittings. Uh, he, uh, and the tabaxi didn't go totally into the whole um, uh, visage of the book, so uh, as far as that. But that's your starting information there. And I'll turn it over to Alyssa, and you're talking uh, right now to some folks in the uh, fort, and it's about noon and, and such, so I'll let you take it from there. Okay, so uh, Alicia is like sitting there in like near the dampest, like coldest corner that she can find because she you know uh, the reason why she likes that is because like she is a druid of the fungus or sprout you know sort of nature and like uh, and like uh, she's in you know she's wearing her sort of black and fungusy type uh, sort of druid outfit you know type of thing with her long bow uh, stretch, you know, stretch, you know, stats, you know, sort of parts on her back. With her head, you know, like a uh, sort of hoodie over her head to keep the uh, burning lights of the torch away from her eyes as she finds the light very sensitive, you know, type thing. And she's like, like, uh, and she's sort of, sit, you know, sort of sitting there, like, with a basket in front of her, like looking, you know, like, like um, looking, and, you know, looking at these like uh, mushrooms and uh, and toadstools that she picked out from like the uh, forest and like sniffing them and like finding out uh, what properties they have. All right, um, and you. You're uh, doing your examination of those uh, of some of the fungus and get uh, and and trying to increase your 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 um, information base on such and uh, and you're picking up that the, this 
this variety around here is a little bit different. It, look, it reminds you of some from where you're from, but you, it's, it's still a little bit different. It's unique. So it's something that's gathering your interest. You're seeing uh, different folks uh, uh, moving around in, the, in and around the fort. You'll see about a half a dozen people passing your way. And uh, with that, um, Sir Knight, um, is kind of passing your way and give a description of Sir Knight and what Sir Knight is doing as you're passing this um, strange being that's uh, playing with uh, mushrooms and such, They're almost like talking to him and, 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 uh, what? he's not heading. He's like examining him. Like, she's like, you know, like, you know, when you like, you know, no, you, I, I, I'm not, I'm I, not talking I, to him. I, I, I got you, Dave, but uh, yeah. the, uh, from what Sir Knight would look from his perspective, it'd be almost like you're talking to it, not saying that you are. It's, it's where you're learning and gleaning uh, that you're very focused, just like when you talk to someone, you're very focused on that person rather than okay. if talking to a crowd. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> well, that's all right. Just explain it uh, so everybody has that. Um, perception or that standard to go from. Go ahead, Sir Knight. He will then walk up to the young ma'am and ask her what are you doing and ask her if you know those mushrooms are very rare and all that. She turns towards the unusual man or the knight before her and like looks at looks at him with like not like revealing her face but like tilting her head slightly but not revealing her face keeping it within the shadows as the light like sin you know like frightens her and she goes i mean no harm a mighty man of great stature i i'm just a helpless druid who likes collecting mushrooms from the wilderness? You see, I, I believe that, uh, that some of the uh, plant life out there are like remedies to illnesses or sicknesses to, to, well, to all types of races amongst us. I believe that these things can like help us in general courses uh, like you know, like a scrape on a on an arm, maybe, or like a nasty cold, or a headache, or other things like that. I mean, no harm. I I just came here with an unusual, an unusual creature, uh, like uh, from 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 the mountains nearby. I, I mean, no harm. Please. Uh, do, do not hit me. <laughs> I will not do no such thing and no harm. But I will just let you be by yourself until <laughs> we just... I, I can't do it. Um, I let you be by yourself. Oh, please. Uh, um... Uh, there's no trouble. Uh, you can uh, join me if you wish. I mean, I just came back. I just escaped an awful tragedy from a, a nearby cave. It was horrific. I'd never seen such dreadful creatures that speak such unusual tongue. Uh, you see, I was with my friend, and my friend is now lost, and I do not know what has happened to him. Oh, I hope he is okay. Unusual cave, you say? Oh, you yes. want to go back? Well, I don't know what to go back there. It is dangerous. I mean, look at me. I'm just a feeble woman with no real muscle and no real skill to fight these creatures. I'm just a helpless little druid, you know, who, who loves the wilderness but finds it fascinating. 
but also it could be very dangerous. That is why I mostly go out well, during the daytime when it's more safer to gather my mushrooms and gather my resources um, to study. Of course, this cave is very dangerous and any, I mean, if you're looking for a challenge and want to be heroic and want to take on a very feisty enemy, then go ahead and to gather a, a strong party uh, and fight these creatures that speak unspeakable tongue. But uh, but uh, uh, it, it, it is very dangerous. I, I wouldn't recommend it for anyone to travel alone up those mountains by themselves. That's why I'm bringing you with me. But why? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's the purpose of bringing me? I mean, I know. I guess you probably want to find the cave, and want to, you know, and 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 see the entrance. I mean, I could take you as far as that. I mean, <laughs> don't expect me to fight or do anything. I mean, I'm just, I'm just helpless and and very feeble. Now, now, young creature. Not helpless in many ways, but you are good at medicine from what you are telling me. Well, yes, uh, I'm, I'm very good at uh, medicine and, yes, uh, other things, but, uh, okay, very well. Um, I guess and I, well, I guess and I, I'll help you in your, uh, find this cave, but, uh, but be careful. There are, there are many of them and only one of you and, if you do get into trouble, do not expect me to help you. I run away. <laughs> like the coward I am. No way, young lady. I will protect you the best I can. Oh, strong words from a very strong fighter. Uh, very well. Uh, uh, come, uh, uh, brave knight. If you wish to test your might, I shall lead you to this unusual cave what I found. Hopefully, if you do well, kill the, if you do uh, slay the monsters, perhaps I can discover some unusual fungus or unusual mushrooms within the depths of this cave. Mm, yes, yeah, that would be good. Very well, I shall take you, but be careful. There is a big, giant, scary blue dragon out there. With lightning breath. Oh, oh, it is, it is, woe is me. It is, it is very, very, very frightening indeed out there. I, I took off my cloak and I showed that I was part dragon, but as a white dragon, I was actually a dragonborn and a holy paladin knight. Oh, a dragonborn, huh? Oh, an unusual species indeed. Oh, very well. Uh, 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 it'd be best to go in daylight uh, when it's not so scary and not so dark out there. Whenever you're ready, then I am ready. Mm. Very well, then. Uh, uh, I guess in the, we will wait until the sun peaks and then we will head out as what? When, when we the, are ready. The sun is peaking right now. Okay. Uh, it's a little after noon because uh, it start, uh, you started noticing things around noon and like that where you were sitting there and like that. So we'll say it's about half past noon uh, mm -hmm. just from watching you uh, uh, focusing on the uh, mushrooms and and learning the things there, and then uh, Sir Knight uh, with his engagement into your uh, fears and information. So uh, it's so you guys can take it from there. Okay. Uh, well, it looks like the the morning sun has peaked. On well, should we um, make our move to this cave? Uh, I'll, I'll do my best to lead the way, but it will take some time. 
there is no easy uh, walk in distance. As you would, ma'am. <laughs> she sort of like slowly, like, you know, like, gets her coat on, you know, type thing and wraps herself up and like, like, hobbles slowly out of, you know, hobbles like, uh, she's feeble and old and she just like, <laughs> okay. And uh, let's see here. Oh, I popped up the uh, the map of the area that you know and kind of the route that you guys uh, took. And let me get my little spotlight out here. And you guys are right up here. The Kamisna Alliance Third Outpost. Uh, you traveled up the uh, traveling on back. You traveled up the roads. You crossed the the river about about here, I believe it was, yeah. on the last episodes. And you know, through the woods was uh, where uh, this cave that you're talking about or ruins are, as as far as that. So the right here is okay about so, uh, where you guys are at at the moment. Yeah, so she like you know follows the road, you know, as much as she can. She says to the knight, "We will follow the road uh, uh, up a couple of miles down here, and then we need to cross a river. Hopefully, you have strong arms and strong legs, for you need to swim across. It is not easy, though, since uh, since you're doing the." Uh, the leading on that and you'll you'll get uh you'll be traveling down there the, the several miles and and such and give me a survival role there alicia okay um uh hang on i got to uh, let me see how do i um well, basically what you're doing is is trying to backtrack and come across where uh, uh and generally where you crossed so is it nature or perception or survival survival uh okay well, i'm not the best at survivalist but <laughs> uh uh did it come up oh, okay. Right. oh yay i got 19. okay you You've, uh, you guys have traveled several miles. It's getting, you get down right about here on, on the map and, uh, here. And you say, this, this looks familiar. So you, you know that now. And from there, you can, uh, RP it. Uh, the only thing I will add to it so you have it for informational background is the fact that now with the travel and everything, you're looking that it's starting to get about four o'clock in the afternoon. Hmm. This is head of well, my night, brave Sun Knight Dragonborn. Should we uh, like camp here for the for the evening, or do you wish to press on with your mighty quest? It's whatever you want, young ma'am. <laughs> well, it's not what I want to. It's, it's what you want. You are the hero of this of this of this crazy uh, adventure. But uh, uh, I'm just here to aid you and help you in your way. I guess. And mm, mm, very well. Um, she she like looks around. Like she like uh, she's uh, sort of like uh, starts slowly heading towards the uh, river. Okay, so you're going towards towards the river. Uh, you're gonna stay on this side of the uh, banks, or are you gonna try, uh, try to ford the river to get to the other side? No, I just sort of like stay there, you know, type thing, and you know, like, and like, what do I see when I approach the banks? Is there any like across uh, across the river? Mm -hmm. uh, you can see. Uh, the uh, uh, the forest that you uh, that looks somewhat familiar to what you come on out of, 
and uh, but it, it's still you can tell that it's still a fair travel to a little bit right now and you're looking that it's getting close to like five o'clock with uh, all your uh, travel off the road to where the where the river is and scouting uh, not scouting scouting per skill say but uh, just the idea of you scanning the area and looking you're taking that time for that uh, but uh, you know you got the uh, grasslands that you're on on this side of the bank and grasslands there on the other side of the bank and then for a distance out away from the grasslands is actually uh, a forest that's fairly thick of mixed of mixed types of wood okay trees i uh, look at the uh brave sunlight and say well here we are at the river uh, one hopefully you can swim across it is one it might be dangerous for you <gasps> yes and you might drown with your heavy armor so i suggest that you uh, take it easy in your petrous journey across this river. Well, what kind of, uh, Sir Knight, what kind of armor do you have on? Uh, like a plated armor. A pl plate, uh, plated armor. Where did you get the plated armor? Not an all plated armor. Um, uh, I got to look at my skills and thing. Okay. Hold on. Let's be calm thing. I got so many tabs open on my phone, it's not even funny. But that's all right. We, uh, we're not here to beat you up. We're here to have fun. So we're beating people up yeah. and always having fun. Shame, I meant. Okay, that's what I was thinking. You had something like that. So it's not really um, too bad, but it it is... Uh, it is somewhat uh, hard, uh, hard to uh, kind of swim or in, and do certain things with it in deep water. It's better than if you had plate or breastplate, but uh, in, in that sense. But yeah, you know that uh, because you've you've had to cross a couple. Uh, bodies of water before you know that uh, it, it is a concern so you'll have to figure out how that you guys are going to handle that and back to back to our heroic heroes <laughs> well she you know she sort of stands there and like you know she approaches the uh um river and like uh she like you know, she takes off her bow, you know, type thing, and puts it in a, you know, like, like a bow case or whatever, you know, like a big long, sort of, like blanket, you know, type thing, and takes off the uh, quivers of her rose, and then puts that in a sort of big giant blanket and starts to wrap it up, and put a bit of like string, uh, uh you know, tight, you know, uh, on it, so it doesn't like, you know fall off her back or whatever you know type of thing and then she like puts the and then like um, and then she makes like a hoop like a big giant hoop and then she like she like look and she like look and then she like look and she looks at the river intensively and like uh, she like breathes in and like she like she starts to shift. She transforms into a brown bear. And like, she comes big and bulky and brown and very sort of biggish and fat. So, okay, so night, well, as you see your traveling partner do this change what are you doing 
Um, he was uh, investigating the water to see how deep it was for him to just how deep and how fast the water was to see if he can just walk through the water. The uh, the water looks like it's uh, it has a lot of dark spots out uh, about five feet from the shoreline uh, where the middle channel looks like it could be uh, rather deep. It's moving not at a spring flood rate, but it, it's it's moving fairly good that it does have some force behind it. And you're talking that the point that you guys are at that you're looking to get across is about 30 feet. Okay. And uh, and the other aspect that you'll know uh, that I'll say you notice is that your your partner is all of a sudden kind of not totally there as you last saw her. You see this big brown, brown. bear yeah. that that the, at some point you it is kind of half of what your friend, uh, your traveling friend was, and bear. Mm -hmm. And so how, how are you, how is Sir Knight uh, digesting this? He looked at the bear and started to smoke a little bit. I never seen one of those before. But I heard them, but never seen one in real life before. All righty, uh, I'll let you guys get back to which uh, how, how you how you're going to get across. Okay, so with her mouth, she picks up the like bow and arrow within her, you know, like muzzle, you know, type thing. Yeah, you know, with the right with the rope tied, and like uh, she starts to like stumble. Um, moves like uh, I move like yeah I can move 40 feet as a bear apparently uh, so I start to move 40 feet into the uh, uh, the waters okay well give me uh, go ahead and give me uh, give me two athletics checks nice that's just why I chose a bear <laughs> <laughs> because they get a plus four to their strength, which is nice. Uh, so plus four. Uh, oops, uh, I got all that again. Uh, I did that correctly. One, two, twenty plus four. All right. All right. I got a twenty-two. Okay, and that's for the first one. How about the second one? Okay, second one, uh, uh, 20. Okay, no no problem. You see this bear just kind of um, doing the bear shuffle, waddling in, and it uh, looks like uh, about uh, five feet in, in from shore, starts actually treading water and swimming, and seems to make it uh, across the other side. Sir Knight, what are you doing at this point? Uh, he will start treading halfway in the water, and then once he hits halfway, he will start taking off his armor, and then starts to oh. carry his armor, and then swim the other half away. Well, uh, okay. So let me get this correct. You're going into the water up to about the about the middle. Once you get past past five foot from the shore, you start the kind of sinking because it's deep there and uh, it does take you to uh, take off chain mail um, let's see here doff chain mail it takes five minutes to uh, take it off so five minutes is you're talking uh, a fairly good amount of time so uh, the, this is information that you, you, you as your character would know that it takes, it takes a bit of time to get it on off. So 
I'm allowing you to, if you want to take it off first, or yeah, I'm going to take it off first. Okay, then you'll take you'll take that off. You'll go. You'll try to go across. Get, uh, is your intent? Give me two. Uh, what's your strength? My strength. Let me check. Abilities. Uh, sixteen. Okay, give me uh, two athletics checks. Okay. Okay, that's a plus three. Okay, that's a D twenty. What? Yes. And how do I do? How do I use your dice that you send it to me? Okay, on that dice roller, what you would do is uh, just go ahead and click on the D twenty die up there. Mm hmm. And. Uh, Push the wallet button. Yep. Uh, did you go ahead and give your character's name up in there? Oh, no, not yet. All right. Do that. That way it attract with you because that, that, uh, this roller uh, goes ahead and associates all your roles to that name and holds them. Uh, I haven't found a way to clear the role, so it keeps them kind of in per perpetuity. So. Uh, okay. Okay, and then whatever I get from the, this roll, add that plus three, and to do it again? Yep. Okay. I got an eight on the first roll. All right, and uh, you start uh, you start sinking below the, uh, below the water level. Mm-hmm. And you're you're having you're you're having a pro uh, a problem with that. Uh, give me a second roll. I okay. got I got, got twenty with plus three. Yep. So you got yourself up from that and and you started moving forward a bit. Uh give me one more. Oh come on. <laughs> All right. You uh you used a lot of energy and you uh and and you, you were you kinda got gotten tired and pulled down from the weight that you're carrying and stuff, and you're Kind of sitting on the lay, uh, sitting on the bottom. You're not dead or, or nothing like that. You're not unconscious, but you're underwater and like that. And we'll hold you there for a second. And Alicia, uh, roll me a perception check since you didn't. Uh, well, uh, what's your passive perception? Let me put it that way. Since you didn't say that you're watching them. Across. So my passive perception is 16. Okay, you noticed that he went under the water. Uh, you heard the splashing with him trying to get up and, and everything, and now you don't see him. Okay, she roll, you know, the you know, she rolls her eyes like, like that, drops the uh, burrow, you know, the blanket, you know, the, the sort of long, yeah. blanket, long blanket in her mouth on the ground on the other, on the other side of the yep. shore. No, no problem. Yeah. And she like remember, and she look at it, remember where it is, you know, type of thing, yeah, know, type of thing, and then, and then goes into the like, uh, charges into the water at uh, eighty feet to like go and grab him. Okay, um, you you get in there, uh, Sir Knight. You see uh, these big paws coming towards you, the uh, and this head coming towards you, uh. Uh, what are you doing now that you're down there? I would try to get up. Okay. Um, give me an athletics roll. I hope it's not a, a, a critical thing. Uh, All right. What do we got here? You still there, Sir Knight? Okay, you're able to get up. You're having a little bit of a challenge. Uh, Alicia, uh, give me one athletics check. Okay, so this is a plus four. So that is a 24. Okay, no, no problem. 
you see him coming up, pushing himself and struggling to come up from the bottom, you're coming on in, you see him clearly, you grab, uh, you grab him however you want, and you'll be able to make it over to the other, sh back to, to the shore, uh, side of the shore that you just came from. Okay. So I'll grab him and pull him towards like the shore where my bow and arrow is, you know, yep. type thing. So I grab him by the, you know, like the collar or something, like a bit of clothing that's quite tight on him and like use him, you know, and like, like pull him to shore, you know, and then like <clears throat> spit, spit out the fabric, you know, type thing. And then like, um, go over, you know, and like go over, to, go in front of my bow and arrow, you know, that's on the floor, that's wrapped up in a big giant fabric, you know, type uh -huh. thing. And then I start to shift back into my, um, Elvish uh, form. Okay. And then, like, um, after I sort of shift back, you know, type thing, I, I sort of like uh, go over to him and sort of like check to see if he's breathing, to see if he's like medically um, okay. All right, then give me a medicine check, but uh, it's a real low. Okay. So this is a plus six. So oh, don't worry about it then. Okay. <laughs> as, as far as I know, I was making the DC five because he's spitting up water, so you know he's alive. But whether or not he's fully well was the thing. So then you'd be able to tell. Yes, he's fully well. He he do, doesn't seem to have water in his lungs, and he wasn't without enough oxygen or air to keep the damage him for any length of time. He's just, uh, he'd be a little bit tired, possibly a touch exhausted from all that struggle, but uh, nothing, and not condition exhausted, just RP exhausted, uh, like running a, a strong race or doing a great uh, athletic feat, uh, mm -hmm. how it tires you out after that, you're winded, I guess would be more accurate. Um, mm -hmm. as, as far as all that, and that's where you guys are at there. And it's starting to get, uh, that, uh, kind of towards darkish, uh, aspect. Uh, it's about six 30 at night now, after you've gotten him, y'all cross, gotten him out, checked him on out and everything. Okay. So after like, he, he you know, he's laying on the ground and what not. She un, un, you know, unties the fabric that she wrapped the bow in, you know, type thing, and the arrows and everything. Puts the bow back on her back and puts the quiver of arrows back on her back, you know, type thing. Because um, I'm not, you know, yeah. You know, and like she, um, put, you know, and like, and then folds up the blanket and puts it in her backpack, you know, type thing. And like, and, and it puts the rope back around her waist, you know, type thing. Yeah, and like uh, as it gets dark and the night sky comes, she reveals her bluish, her sort of face. Um, so do you want me to describe what her face looks like? I guess. And so that's you, up, that's yeah, up to you, that's up to you. Okay. So before, yeah. You know, so tonight you see a woman with like uh, very white hair, very sort of like dark blackish sort of uh, hair sort of thing, sort of a mixture of like this sort of grayish black sort of tone uh, hair, you know, sort of two tones sort of gray blackish hair, very long. And she has very sort of like bluish sort of grayish tony skin, you know, type of thing, like, like un very unusual for an elf to have, like sort of like this weird sort of like sort of like, like bluish like grayish tone light skin you know type thing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. like uh, and she has solid black eyes like the blackest you've ever seen like there's no pupils it's like solid black and like yeah you know and like uh, she like looks around and her eyes just like just open to the darkness around her and like and she smiles as the darkness comes
Okay, so what do you guys, uh, Sir Knight, you doing anything? What do you, uh, you guys going to go on? You going to build a camp? Yeah, you're, I'm going to be able you're, to. You're about uh, a mile and a half from the forest. You're on the okay. grasslands. All right. She, like, gra gathers some driftwood, you know, type thing or whatever she can find on the yeah. ground. You'll find, you'll find uh, ample enough kindling to make a, uh, campfire, if that's what you're desiring. Yeah, she um, she like after that she like lights it, and like she casts the spell Goodberry. Okay. And like you know, uh, you know, like you know, you know, like you know, type thing, and like feeds one to the brave tonight and one to herself. Okay, you guys uh, feel. A, a wonderful flavor from the berry uh, hits your mouth. Uh, it, it reminds you of uh, one of your most favorite flavors uh, of a of plant or something that you uh, enjoy eating. It gives you that flavor. If you like blueberries, it, it makes the sense, senses give you that feel that uh, you just ate a very beautiful, rich, full-flavored blueberry. If you like radishes, it's one of the best radishes. Turnips is one of the best turnip flavors that you've ever had uh, for you to have that. And you feel full. And if you happen to be down any hit points, which none of you are, uh, you'd feel a little bit better. All right. And then uh, I... After she like, and then she puts like a little, you know, because it's like, you know, she has like a little jar of berries, you know, so she only takes that one and then she puts a lid on and then puts the uh, jar of berries like back in her bag, you know, type thing. And you hear like bits of, bits of you know, you hear little, little bits of clinging and clanging from other little jars of stuff that she has in there, you know, type thing. Like, right. chung, 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 you know, type thing when you're missing yep. the bag. All right, so you got eight good berries left. Mm -hmm. And then she, like, uh, gets the timber and gathers it up into a nice little triangle formation, puts stones, you know, like a little pyramid, you know, and puts stones around the edge and flint and steel <laughs> lights, the, lights, the, lights the fire. Yep, no problem. You'll get, uh, you'll get the fire going. You'll have the fire going. And like she drags the like Sir Knight to the walls of fire and says, "There." Well, he can he, he can walk if he. Okay. He, uh, he's he's not disabled like that. It was it was well, just. That, know, well, she thinks she's disabled. Yeah. He can, okay, that's fine. I, I stand corrected. Yeah. So, well, you know, and she says, "There, there, brave Sir Knight. That harsh." That harsh water almost got you. You almost drowned upon me. Uh, here, sit next to the fire. Dry yourself. And, and get merry, my friend. The night has come. The children of the forest shall sing. And the fireflies will come out and play. On the fire, uh, wait about 30 minutes or so. So he stands up and put on his armor and takes the first night watch. Here, Sir Knight, your volume is kind of down. <laughs> oh, sorry, I got That's my right. microphone cover. Yep, all right, just letting you know. Yeah, did y'all catch everything? Yeah, I think you said you were doing the first watch. And I yeah, after thirty minutes of drying off. Hmm. Yeah, well, it's that's that's no problem. The drying off thirty minutes there. Uh, I mean, it's it's getting uh, about the time that you get all that done. It, it's getting about seven thirty in the evening. Okay. So, sir, night, you're taking first watch. I'm taking it then. 
Yes, sir. Okay. Um, do you have uh, dark vision? Uh, let me go back to my sheet. Okay. I don't so. All right. So, so you'll be you'll be using the uh, light from the campfire is what I'm getting at. Work why with me. But uh Okay, here we go. I'm back on my couch sheet. Okay. Um Okay, dog fishing. That's in my abilities, right? Or racial abil abilities, yes. Oh features and traits. Yeah, that could be under under that depending on how your character sheet is set up. Yeah, I don't know how D and D Beyond did all this. <laughs> uh, you're playing. Uh, what's the race that you're playing? You're playing uh, Dragonborn, right? Or a human variant? Dragonborn. Okay. Then, uh, yeah, you. I, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you don't. Uh, Dragonborns don't have uh, dark vision. Mm -mm. No, I don't see it on my sheet. And uh, so you're using the campfire light. Uh, give me. So you you're gonna you're taking the first watch. So you're splitting up the uh, splitting up the night basically uh, about about six hours and six hours. Mm -hmm. or four or four and yes. four. Yes. But okay. Give uh, Sir Knight. Give me. Uh, a D12 roll. Straight a D12? Up. Yep, just straight up. Okay. All right. Well, you only needed just one. <laughs> just one. That's all right, though. Um, all right. Your shift goes by uh, uneventful uh, as, as far as that. Uh, Okay, and uh, it comes time for your change of uh, shift with Alicia. Alicia, what do you do? All right, so Alicia gets up, like with her head, like her like hood, completely down, you know, type thing, with a, you know, showing her face, and like uh, she looks, you know, she like sort of like um, sort of steps away from the uh, sort of like light. Making sure it doesn't catch her, you know, capture her uh, sight, you know, like doesn't blind her too much. So she steps like right on the edge of the light, you know, type thing, like where it's quite, you know, darkest of them all. And like, and she looks right into the darkness, 120 feet into the darkness of the night as her, oh, okay. like, as her super dark vision of the dark elf comes into play. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, uh, first thing that we'll handle, uh, so I know it along, along the line, uh, roll me a d12. Uh, just a d12, yeah? Yep. Right. Uh, okay. I got a, oh, a natural one. Oh, okay. That's good. Um, roll me your, um, perception check. Uh, cool. My perception is all right. So this is beyond my passive perception, yeah. Yes. Uh, since, you, since you're scan as scanning around, looking around, as you said. Okay. So what was that? Guess? Hang on. Okay. Hang on. Well, I got to figure out what my perce my perception is. Hang on. <laughs> I'll get my sheet up. Hang on. Uh, what is my perception? My perception is I'm trained, so that's plus six. All right, cool. So I've got plus six to that. All right, so what well, one to 20 plus six? So, oh, okay, I've got a natural one. <laughs> All right, <laughs> everything is looking uh, pretty and pretty decent at the beginning of your shift and, and such, and then all of a, all of a sudden. 
Let me see what he was using. Yeah, that's what. He, uh, he, it, uh, let's see here. Um, it becomes, uh, uh, very dark. You can't, in fact, you can't see, you don't see the, uh, you don't see the, the campfire. You don't see Sir Knight. And uh, let's uh, roll for initiative. And let's these guys go for initiative. I heard someone's little ones. Yeah, David. He, ha he has a, a baby baby. Oh, wow. A cute little guy. Uh, that was... You there, David? <laughs> Is David still here? Oh, yeah, he's still he's still here. He's just taking care of father business. Uh, what did Sir Knight get for initiative? Oh, I did well initiative too. Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. I thought um, I thought it would be one of those surprise encounter things. Well, it it, it sort of is, but I, I'm just trying to get initiative out for of, both, just in case. At, no, just out of the way. Because yeah, yeah, will fall into it. So, what is my so initiative? What is that? That's my saving throws. No, uh, d20 plus your uh, dex modifier. Oh, uh, my dex modifier, unless, That's a you, plus. unless uh -huh. you unless you have a feat or ability or something that adds to it, but uh, I don't. I, I got a plus two for now, but let me look at my features on my feet. Uh, yeah. Huh? Um. What's your initiative, Alicia? Oh, my initiative. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, can you NPC me because I have to go because my son is really, really crying really badly. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. Fan, you know, real life first as 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 far as that. Uh, yeah. Take uh, care. <laughs> yep. Yep. Bye, no David. Sorry about that. That's yep. right. No problem. Well, oh, we'll we'll manage. All right. Uh, so, all right, uh, yeah, uh, let's see here. What was your initiative, uh, Sir Knight? Yeah, I don't see anything as an extra bonus, so I'm just going to do D20, D20 plus two. Yeah. Five. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, um, Sir Knight, there, uh, and this is, um, Dean's and I looking to buy for me and, no, not, not for either one of you, <laughs> as far as that, so let me, let me, uh, let me roll here, just roll something so I know. For Alicia, and okay, and yeah, that, yeah. Oh, say she went ahead. I think her, uh, I think something is like plus six or whatever. Well, that's all right. She's she uh, with the darkness and whatnot. She yells on out. Wake up, wake up. 
and she's trying to she's trying to uh, see where oh, where this is has has come and uh, as far as that and, and let's see here it will be up to I gotta double check that one thing okay and uh, Let's see here. I need to do that right there. Oh, okay. And you hear Alicia, uh, Alicia, uh, hollering, and uh, wake up, wake up, and then all of a sudden she goes silent, and it's black all around, and it's your go. Sir Knight, what are you doing? Oh, sorry, I'm, I forgot to put myself on mute. Okay. Uh, um, I will grab my sword and I put him on my armor and charge at Alicia's uh, protection. All right, you don't see Alicia. Uh, it's, I mean, it's black, black. It's totally black. You see nothing. You don't even see the campfire. I just follow the sound of a voice from from the last place. Okay, you'll you'll get over over there and uh, uh, over in where you think think uh, she is. Give me a um, perception or investigation role at disadvantage. What is that as disadvantage? Uh, you roll 2d20 for the roll, and you take the lowest uh, of, of the two. Okay, let me look at my investigation skills. Ah. Okay. 2d20s, right? Yeah, 2d20s. Oh, my. Take the lower, so three plus. Can I just uh, keep the five? I got a two uh, plus two. Okay. That, so I know the second one is going to be five. I mean, I, it's higher than a five. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, so you, you got a five. You don't, you can't seem to find her. As, as okay. Far as, as far as that, uh, you're, uh, it's quiet. You don't hear her uh, saying anything or moving at that point. Um, let's see here. How long is that? What is the length? Just to double check. Uh, here. And... Uh, Okay, that lasts up to ten minutes. So it's it's dark around there for for uh, uh, ten. Uh, it's going to be dark around there for about ten minutes unless something changes. Um, give me a perception check with uh, disadvantage. Again. Yep. Uh, Okay, and that's my dex, uh, my dex modifier, right? No. Oh, that's your, that's your uh, wisdom modifier. Oh, my wisdom modifier now. Yeah, unless you're uh, a profi uh, unless you have proficiency in uh, perception, and if you do, then uh, you also get your proficiency bonus. Uh, I got a plus two. Um, how do I check my proficiency? Uh, over on your skills. Oh, okay. If if you haven't checked as proficient, 
then you'll have your proficiency uh, modifier. Oh, no. Okay. I have persuasion. Oh, oh that, that's the that, only P that I got it okay. highlighted. Okay, no problem. Then uh, take your wisdom modifier and add it to the D20 rolls. And since it's a disadvantage, roll two D20s and take the lowest. What wisdom modifier? I got a not one. Yeah, well, that that's all right. Uh, in skill checks uh, like that, na uh, natural ones, natural 20s don't guarantee a total failure or total, total success. But you don't seem to hear nothing. All you're hearing is the quiet of the night and, and such. And uh, after about 10 minutes of you searching around, trying to be cautious and whatnot, um, all of a sudden you can see uh, it, it's not as dark as it used to be. And you can mm -hmm. see and you can see the campfire again. Okay. What are you doing? I will go back to the campfire, put on my armor. Okay. And then try to search for Licia. All right. Um, give me a, a give me a survival check. Okay. I think I have a bonus of that. Let me check. I think. Oh. I don't know. Okay. Oh, no, no, when I lied. Okay, give me a survival check. I got a 12. You don't find any um, signs Tw of uh, where she is or possibly uh, any uh, tracks or such or, or of a struggle uh, of and around the area. Uh, as as far as that goes, um, and it's about midnight now. Can I do one more war as investigation to see if she dropped a ball or anything? Um, yeah, you can you can do that. Okay, let me see if I have a bonus. Is that I forgot about that? Oh, I do. By two. Okay. Ten, of course. Uh, okay. You don't uh, notice her bow or any uh, of her property around around there. The night is eer eerily quiet and dark. Mm -hmm. The campfire, you hear crackle once in a bit, and it's starting to, uh, since uh, no, uh, no one's put any more of the firewood on it, it's starting to die down. It's still there, uh, but it's starting to die down. I just and I just start like yeah, walking it. away from the fire and go yeah. into the forest. Okay. All right, as you go into the forest. Give me, uh, you'll get about uh, 60 feet into the, uh, the forest, and it's really uh, thick. Give me an initiative roll. Initiative roll? Yep. Any bonuses on that? Nope. Oh, just straight up? Yep. Well, you plus your initiative, well, uh, it's, you'll oh. add your... You'd add your uh, dex modifier. Oh, my dex modifier. So 17, I got a 19 too. All right, then uh, you'll go, you'll go, you'll go uh, first. You think you heard uh, something off to your left and you see what looks to be possibly a small dark shadow. Standing, I will standing I, about uh, fifteen feet from you. 
I would pick up a rock and throw it at it, like not really hard, not really hard, but like medium hard. Okay, roll the hit. Okay, and that's a D twenty plus my strength modifier, right? Yes. Okay, now that I do remember. <laughs> that's just sad. And, Thirteen. Okay, and uh, it miss it misses it kind of kind of like it. Uh, Falls off to the left, just just a little bit from where you thought you were gonna go with it. Mm -hmm. uh, you doing anything else? Yeah, that's your attack action. You gonna move? You or uh, uh, or action? Pull a sword or? Let me see real quick. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Sorry, I'm just reading all this. Yep, yep, no problem. Because like I said, I never paid as a pounder before, but I heard they're very OP. Well, I, any uh, any character class race, as far as I'm concerned, is old, can be OP if played correctly. Yeah, I'm trying to play this as powerful as I can. No, I'm not going to do anything else. All right. And uh, you see this dark shadow move on up to, up to you. And mm -hmm. let's see here. It's going to it's going to swing at you. And oh. The uh, does a they get a plus to that too. Oh. Um, does a twenty-three hit, and I would think that it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Well, Even with my chainmail armor. <laughs> okay, and uh, you'll take uh, five hit points of piercing damage as you feel this cold taste of steel going in between the, the chain links into your side. Ouch. And, okay. Yeah. And it's your turn. How far is this creature now? He's five feet away from you. He's in melee oh, round. Oh, he is. Yeah, he moved up to you. Ooh. Hold on, I had something special for him. Okay. Okay, I'm going to use on arm strike. Okay. Have you heard of that before? Yeah, yeah, for monks. Yeah, well, it has it on the on this one too. I don't know why. Okay. But Instead of using a weapon to make a melee weapon attack, you can use an unarmed strike. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead and ro go ahead and roll the hit. Okay. Does that mean now my strength modifier is a plus five? No. Oh, so my strength modifier is still plus three. Unless, five. unless you have that monk monk ability, go. Uh, what's it saying that you have for that? Generally, it's just your strength modifier for uh, improvised attack. Ah, uh, okay. It says hit slash DC plus five. So I got confused. Okay. Okay, so my strength modifier is plus three. Nine. Did, okay, a nine. A nine misses. You swing, and even the five wouldn't miss. 
as as far as that. So well, I got a six, and the six plus three equals nine. Yeah, but six plus five would have been eleven. That was not oh uh, yeah, not a charmer class. So uh, even uh, just to put your mind at rest on on that one, you're doing anything else? You you swung to attack, you miss. Let me see. Let me see if I have anything else. I think I have lot lay of hands. Can I use lay of hands on myself or no? Uh, you can, but not this round since you attacked. Oh, never mind. No, I can't. Nothing else for me. Are you going to uh, go ahead and try to move out? Or which would allow a, an attack of opportunity, just to be fair? Or you going to try to Yeah, dodge. I'm going to move out. Okay. And ready. Then he'll take his attack of opportunity. Come on. Oh, damn. There we go. Roll it. Oof. He, uh, he hits you with that attack of opportunity. You take five more uh, points of piercing damage. And five how, more? Yep. How far are you moving? Like five, like 10 feet. You sure? Yeah. Oh, okay. And this little dark shadow is uh, going to come and move up to you and try to attack you again. What? Oh, my God. I'm going to die. <laughs> Well, I, I was asking how far you wanted to move. Oh, my gosh. I'm going dodge this time. But, uh, oh, let's see here. Well, he may not hit this time. Let's see. Uh, 13 plus 5. You hit. Let me see here. Yeah, they get a plus 5. He has a plus 5 on anything he hits. Uh Okay, and uh, you take five more points of piercing damage. I'm down below the 20s now. And uh, I'm like 17 on my health. Okay. I don't know why I did. I think I did something wrong. Equipment. Oh, uh, I was trying to find something. Okay, go ahead. What was the last attack? I did not, I forgot to equip my chain armor. Uh, that would have been 18. Yeah, even with my chain armor, that was like too, too higher than my chain, chain armor equip. Okay. I, but my chain arm was 16. Okay. So. Okay. I'm going to use my breath weapon. All right. And I need to see what um, spells. Uh, hold on. Let me try to find it first. Let's see here. I'll go ahead. If you're using a breath weapon to get the. Uh, Damage 2d6, attack save. Okay, the attack slash save thing is con 11. Attack type 1. So 2d6. Okay, I'm reading this. So the saving throw is a con, right? Yeah. Okay. And I need to roll 2d6. All right. And the, I think what the, what the ones that you need to pass is 11 or something like that. Yep. I, I, I'm, I'm cracking. Go ahead and roll your damage. Eight. Okay. Okay. All right, he looks bothered and maybe bloodied. Mm -hmm. 
maybe doing anything else uh nope because i was an action yep that was an attack action but you can there's still other actions that you can do if you if you have, have oh yeah order. let me let me see if i have any items on me do you got a bonus attack a bonus action or you know certain things like that i know i have a bonus action but i just don't know if i have any items on me Well, you should, uh, whatever equipment you got, you should have basically on. Yeah, there. I know. Uh, Tinderbox. And you Not can, to heal me, though. And, and you can always move. Yeah, I'm going to move another but, 10 feet back. Well, here again, remember that uh, with moving out of melee combat, you're going to put yourself in the position of uh, having an attack of opportunity, so. You can either move out, and when you move, keep in mind how far you need to move. I'll move out five feet. Okay. Did you hear me? Yeah, I, I heard you. I know what you're saying. He's gonna. I just a, need to heal. Well, he's gonna take an attack of opportunity. Yeah. And uh, let's see here. Let's see what we get. That's a twenty-three to hit. Yes. And five points. Yes. Of piercing damage. Oh my God! I need to heal big time. And then it's his turn. And he'll attack again, and that's an 18. Yes, again. And another five points of piercing damage. Oh, my God. Where's Elsa when you need her? Well, that's, oh, a, that, that's a good question. Uh, but it's your go. I'm going to use lay on hands on myself. Okay. Bells. Hold on, one, one thing. Let me go to. Let me try to find lay on hands. Okay. One thing again, Dylan. Actions. You. Your blessed touch can heal wounds. You have a pool of healing power that your repentance stick a long rest with that pool. You can restore the total number of hit points equal to your pound and level times five. So... What level paladin are you? Four. So that would be 20, right? Yep. So I'm back at 27. Okay. So that's your action. Yep. And then I will move up. What, like, right in front of him? You sure you want to do that? Okay. And now I'm double checking. Um, I just uh I just dodge on the next turn. Okay. And he'll move up there to you on the one side and he'll let me add another one. He'll strike at you, but since you're dodging, it's with disadvantage. And does a twelve hit you? Nope. Okay, he misses. And go ahead, your turn. Okay, I'll use my breath weapon weapon again. Okay, uh, did that recharge? Because you uh, can only use oh, it yeah, I certain forgot about times. That. Yeah, I forgot about that. My bad. Uh, I'm trying to see. Uh, 
Oh, short or long rest. Yep. So you don't have it. Yeah, I just announced all that. How far am I away from this creature? You're in melee range. Melee range? Yeah, it means he's within five feet of you. He's. That's why he can attack you with his dagger. Ah, uh, okay. Um, I'll use my sword sword. I will equip my sword sword. Okay. And then there was there was a action that I can use on my sword sword. I'm trying to find it. Okay. Uh, okay, not going to use that. No, I'm just going to use Channel Divinity Sacred Weapon. Okay. And I'm going to use it on my sword sword. Okay. Oh, is that the right one? I can't remember. Yeah, that's the right one. I'm, I've channeled the Divinity yeah. and channeled Divinity Sacred Weapon. Okay. So I got confused. My bad. No, so that means bad. I. So that means uh, plus plus four on my strength modifier now. Yeah. Okay. What's the point, anyways? The the point of what? I got on that one. Ooh, you miss horribly and. You drop your weapon. It slips out of your hand as as it goes uh, uh, for the, for the swipe. Okay, and let's see here. Got to take that one out, and he will go ahead and swing at you. Okay, for eighteen. Yep. Five points of piercing damage. Yep. And uh, he's gonna he, he's gonna chuckle a little bit, and he's ducking down and about, but that's about it. Your go. Okay. So he's dodging this turn, right? No, he's just oh. ducking it down, the thematic aspect. Ah, uh, okay. I will... Hold on. I will pick up my sword sword. Okay. And then uh, does that it does that equal as a bonus action or an actual action? Just uh just uh basically an item interaction more or less. Uh go ahead. You can and then you have your attack action, no problem. Okay, and then I will attack him. Swing the hit. Okay. Does a 16 hit? Yes, it does. Finally. Roll the damage. Okay. Finally, I get the hit. Now I just need to go back over there. Hold on. So my sword sword does 1d6 plus 5. Okay. Hold on, Charles. Yep, no yeah. problem. Oh. 
Sorry about that, Charles. That's all right. Okay, 1D6 plus 5. Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, eight. Eight points of damage. Roll me a constitution saving throw. As when you hit this guy, all of a sudden, there's a bright flash of light that explodes from him. Constitution saving throw. I got a plus one on my con saving throw. Okay. And so how do I make a constitution saving throw? Roll a d20 and add your plus one. Oh, okay. Eleven. Eleven. Okay. Uh, you're not blinded. Oh, that's a good thing. And as far as I can tell, it, you're out there in the middle, uh, at the edge, inside the edge of the woods. It's dark. It's about 1230 in the evening. You're by yourself. As far as you, uh, at this point, you don't see or hear Elijah. What are you doing? I would go deeper into the forest to still try to find Elijah. Oh, okay. As you go, you'll go in, uh, in through the woods and you'll travel. And it'll get to be about uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. And mm -hmm. you'll end up about here. You'll see the uh, a set of uh, ruins out there. And you'll see these little uh these little uh dragon like uh creatures marching around there and there's a total of uh for what you can see out there with the uh limited light that you could tell is uh probably about six of them and you can, uh, since uh, you're dragonborn, you'll be able to understand, I believe, draconic. So, yep. And uh, you'll hear them uh, talking to one another. Stay alert! Stay alert! They've told us there's there's intruders coming. We gotta let the mistress go ahead and do what she needs to do, do the rituals and such, so we can become powerful once again. And uh, so you hear that little side talk as they're marching back and forth uh, in front of the uh, ruins. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Uh, I know I'm not very stealthy and all that, but I'm going to do a stealth wall. What are you, uh, for, uh, why? What, what are you trying to do? That's what I want to try to get in my mind yeah no uh that's what came up into my mind but i haven't fully understand it i want to see what else do they have planning on why do they want to become powerful oh so you got like why do they need this power well the st uh, stealth may not tell you that and uh are you going to talk to him? Are you uh, are you going to... I'm just afraid if I talk to them, they might attack me. That's a good possibility. Since they've already been alerted that there's intruders out there. Yeah. So I don't honestly know what to do. Well, talking to them may not sound like the smartest thing. You're not very good at stealth, you said, so. Um, I got a plus two in, so. Yeah, but you roll that because you're in uh, chain mail. I believe you roll that with disadvantage. Yeah, that is true. I forgot about that. So. What about, uh, what does persuasion do? That's if you're talking to them. 
and you're trying to sway them possibly to your want or desire or, or trying to befriend them somewhat, it allows you that or on that aspect. Can I do a persuasion, Will? You going to talk to them? Yeah, I'm going to try to talk to you like a lonely person, like a lonely uh, dragonborn type creature, like all by himself or whatever, try to, not with the other group, so you know what not, I mean? Well, okay, so you're going to come out from the woods and show yourself to him? Yeah. All right. I'm going to take the risk. All right. As you, as you do, you're going to hear, halt, stop, stop, intruder, intruder. And, uh, and you'll hear that in uh, Draconic. Uh, what, do you, what do you do? I will speak at the Draconic to them and say, I'm not here to harm you. I am here to find my friend and, uh, and um, I am interested in why you wanted to become more powerful. And uh, roll a persuasion. Okay, so that's a D20 plus one then. Oh, yeah, D20 plus whatever the, the your modifier yeah. of persuasion is. That's an eight. Okay. I probably got myself locked out. Let's see here. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Damn. You traitorous abomination, they'll say. And you'll have those six uh, kobolds and shields and spears pointed at you and tell you, come this way or die. I'll just follow them. Okay. They're surra kind of surrounded you. They'll push you over into the uh, ruins. And you'll notice that there's a makeshift um slab almost like altar that was mm -hmm. put up there and you'll see Alicia Alicia tied to it and you'll see one of these coal a strange looking kobolds uh shaking uh a turtle shell with the uh, pebbles or something in it some old teeth and and like that around it, and you'll see this taller humanoid figure with that has her face uh, draped with a hooded cloak and standing there uh, mumbling some words there, and uh, you're coming on in into that. Uh, roll me. I'll let you either an intelligent intelligence check or wisdom check do you have um yeah uh we'll say a religion check knowledge religion uh oh i'm good in religion well roll me a knowledge religion okay that's a, that's probably one of the most skills that i'm good in okay nine <laughs> altogether Okay, you don't have a clue except for the fact that you know that it's some kind of ritual. You don't know which ritual, uh, but you're gonna uh, give me a straight up intelligence roll. Uh, uh, hey Charles. Yes. I'm, uh, do do you want to take a break real quick? Well, I I can uh, as as far as that. You got to eat and all that. I I can I can go ahead and wrap this up uh, for the night here within a minute or so. Okay, because I have to eat. Okay, no problem. Um, okay. Do uh, do me a an intelligence. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Hang up the phone and come eat. You did tell you to come and eat. Yeah, no, I'm about to end my game. I need you to go ahead on. We gonna we gonna wait on you. Everybody goes at the same time. Yeah, no. Everybody does that at the same time because you already know that I got the same race. Right. You know what I mean? Everybody does that at the same time.
Dylan, Dylan, go, yes, sir. go ahead and go eat. I didn't mean to get you in <laughs> hot water. Basically, what you'll, you'll figure is the human sacrifice that will end the game there, and we'll pick it up from there. Okay. All right. Have a good one. Okay. Yep. And let's see here. I want to stop the share. And I will stop live stream. And I will...